If you ever wondered why we stay so long and so still in those yin yoga classes, then this beginner yin yoga class is for you. Hi, I'm Melissa from Yoga with Melissa. I teach real yoga for real people. And today I am a guest here on Heart Alchemy Yoga. So thank you so much, Michelle, for having me. If you come on over to my channel, Yoga with Melissa, then Michelle is doing a power yoga video over on my channel. And when you come over there, you'll see that I put out a brand new video there every Friday morning at 9 a.m. Pacific time. And I have some great content coming out for you on on Friday, the January the 26th, it's our next live class. We do a live class on the last Friday of every month, and we're going to do a yin class for your upper back. And then on February 2nd, we're going to do yin for lower back pain. And on February 9th, we're going to do yin for shoulders. So if those sound like things that interest you, then while you're over there enjoying Michelle's power yoga class, you can subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss a single class from my channel as well. And if you're new here, then I encourage you to check out all of Michelle's content. The thing that I love about Michelle the most is just relaxing into her amazing, open-hearted presence. It's just so nourishing. So make sure you subscribe and turn on notifications here on Heart Alchemy Yoga because Michelle just has a wonderful presence and that is enough to stick around for, in my opinion. So today we're doing a beginner yin yoga class and if you're new here um, and you haven't done yin before then make sure or yoga <laughs> then it's a good idea to check in with your doctor especially if you have any injuries or illnesses and you just want to make sure that uh, you know what movements you can do and what movements you need to avoid so that you can look after yourself when you're in a yoga class. I'm also going to do a little preview for you here so that you know if this class is doable. So today in this class, we're going to be doing wide knee child's pose, and I will be giving lots of modifications and variations as well. So uh, not to worry about that, um, but just to see if the general shapes, there's things that you can do in your body. And if not, then you'll know we don't have to go down the whole path together 45 minutes, <laughs> uh, waste your time. So wide knee child's pose. We'll be doing Sphinx pose, and we'll be doing Dragon pose, which many of you will know as lunge pose and yoga and exercise in general. Banana asana, which is a reclined side bend, and then we'll be doing a lying twist pose, and we will begin and end with the Shavasana. So if that sounds like something that is doable for you and your body today, then welcome, and let's get started with a centering, with lying down on our backs with our knees bent and our feet flat on the floor. Okay, so at the beginning of the class, we lie on our backs. And especially if you have low back issues or low back pain, it's a good idea to keep your knees bent and your feet flat on the floor, just so that you don't aggravate your back. Otherwise, you can lengthen your legs out long. It's also nice to let your knees drop in towards each other, take the pressure off your hips. And we do this just to transition from the busyness of our days into a quieter, more focused time of yoga. And here we're just going to be focusing on the support of the earth underneath us. And let any tension from your body drop down and into the earth.
and breathe into your lower belly. And then from here, we're going to come over into child's pose. And I'm going to show you a modification first because it may be too much for your knees, too much for your ankles and the tops of your feet, feet, feet. <laughs> and if that's the case, then what you're going to do is take knees to chest on your back, holding on behind your knees so you don't put any pressure on your knees. It can be nice to cross your hands here so you can get a wide knee, uh, knees to chest, just like we're going to be doing wide knee child's pose. Um, in the other position. So this is your modification and alternative, especially if you have knee issues or tight tops of the ankles. Otherwise, you're going to be coming with us here. You're going to roll over. And we're going to open our knees wide. And fold forward. Rest your forehead on the ground. If that's too low, like if your butt lifts up because your quads are tight, then you can pile up some cushions here and rest on a, um, some cushions from your couch, whatever you have handy. Just make it, you can make it work in your body. So yin yoga is a genre of yoga that focuses on the deeper connective tissues wrapping around the joints, particularly in your hips and pelvis and your lower spine. And this is quite different from most forms of yoga which focus on the muscles. With yin yoga, we hold the yin yoga poses for longer periods of time, usually for about five minutes rather than the typical five breaths. Most forms of yoga focus on the superficial muscles rather than the deeper layers of connective tissues, ligaments, and joints, and bones that we focus on during yin yoga. And muscles respond well to the faster rhythmic movements that you find in these forms of yoga because this increases their fluid content, giving them more flexibility and strength. But here in yin yoga, we stay in the poses and we apply slow and gentle traction to access the deeper tissues. Okay, so you're going to slowly make your way out of this pose with care. Often it can be coming out of the pose where we can hurt ourselves. And then we're going to lie on our backs again. And we do this so we can feel the effects of this, po of this pose. If you have back issues, you're gonna bend your knees with your feet flat on the floor. Otherwise you can lengthen your legs out. So this is called the rebound or the reverberation. And you might be able to feel the energy moving through your lower body. So just check in and feel and notice how the pose feels post-pose in your body. And then you're going to lie on your stomach. And you're going to 
wiggle your hips from side to side just to release your low back. You can tuck your right toes under, lift your right knee, reach back through your right heel. Tuck your left toes under, lift your left knee, reach back through your left heel. That should help to release your low back and create more space in it. And then you're going to walk your elbows back underneath your shoulders. And you're going to stay here. So this pose is great to tone your kidneys and your adrenals. So there are three main principles in yin yoga that we will be covering in today's beginner yin yoga class. They are edge, which we'll be talking about. That's number one. Number two, we resolve to be still in the pose. And number three, we stay for a while. So we're going to explore each one in depth. And depth is also a concept of yin, an aspect of yin which we could look at another time. But for now, let's just be still, breathe into our low back. Okay, so go ahead and walk your elbows forward and feel the reverberation of this pose, especially in your low back. Okay, so from here you're going to push yourself up onto all fours and we're going to come into that lunge pose. So you're going to actually walk your left foot between your hands. You may want to have a couple of yoga blocks, which you might not have if you're a beginner, or a chair here if it's difficult to reach to the ground. So you could have a chair here to hold on there. Whatever works best for you and your body. So the first principle of yin yoga is edge. And what that means is that we come into the yin yoga pose and we find an appropriate edge. So yin yoga isn't an aesthetic practice. That means it doesn't matter what your pose looks like. It matters what it feels like in your body. So for example, in this pose, you wanna feel it at the front of your right hip. So it's not like we're trying to take the best Instagram photo here. <laughs> so edge shouldn't be any sharp shooting pains, nothing burning or electric, but you might be feeling something dull or achy or uncomfortable. And with yin, because we stay for such a long time in the poses, you probably don't wanna to come to your maximum effort. Actually, you don't wanna to come to your maximum effort. You probably wanna choose 70% effort. So don't come all the way to the fullest edge in a yin pose. Because over time, that slow and gentle traction is really going to do the work. You let time and gravity do the work in a yin pose.
Okay, so very slowly you're going to release this pose from your body. And you can either sit back on your heels or with your legs out long in front of you. Again, just to let that rebound settle in. And then we'll go ahead and do this pose on the other side. So this time you're going to walk your right leg forward. And remember, this side can be completely different. So you might not be able to go forward as much or it might feel completely different. You might have to back off a bit. That's normal. So if the sensation is burning or sharp or stabbing or electric, especially if it's an intense small area, then this can indicate overstretching and it can potentially damage your tissue. If the sensation is more dull or aching or throbbing, then this normally indicates the tissue being tugged in a way that is healthy. If tingling sensation occurs, that can be a sign of damaging a nerve or a blockage of blood flow. Pins and needles can be a consequence of too much pressure in particular parts of your body and a sign that you need to slightly shift your shape. So these are all important things to feel into and listen for in your body. Okay, go ahead and feel, lie on your back and feel the rebound of this. Um, I'm also going to give you some modifications for this pose, lunge pose that we just did. I realize it might be a little too little too late, but if you do this video again, one is that it can be a bit much weight bearing on the knees here. So I just want to call attention to the fact that I had a folded blanket underneath my knees. So it's very nice when you're practicing yin yoga to... Uh, either do it right on your carpet at home or to have a folded blanket underneath you. The other is, if you're doing this video for the second time, that you can also do lunge pose on your back if it's still too much to weight bear through your knees. So you just draw your knee into your chest and you hold on to the bottom of your foot like that. Or you can even use a strap to hold on, for like a tie from your bathrobe if you can't reach the bottom of your foot. So you could do lunge pose like that. Okay, so two alternatives to that. All right. So you've been feeling the rebound in your body from lunge pose on both sides. And we're going to move on to the next pose, and I think the best named Jian pose in the repertoire, which is banana asana. Makes me want to eat bananas. <laughs> You're going to take your feet over to the left side of your mat and you're going to take your arms overhead. Then once your arms are overhead, holding onto your elbows, you're going to bring your body over to the left side. And again, here choosing appropriate edge is important because remember, you're feeling this all along your whole side body and you're going to be here for two minutes. So the next uh, principle of yin yoga is to become still. Allow your muscles to soften. Let gravity take the weight of your body. 
because we want all the energy to pool in the deep layers of the bones and the joints. And if we continue to move, the energy will stay at the more superficial layers of the muscles. The stillness of the pose will also allow us to access the yin qualities of surrender, ease, relaxation, and restfulness. Additionally, the stillness allows us to explore physical sensations and emotions that arise without our habitual reactivity and impulsiveness. We are learning to soften into our discomfort, cultivating non-abandoning attention. Softening the muscles and allowing gravity to take us will also allow us to access the deeper connective tissues that wrap around the joints and the bones. Okay, so very slowly take your arms back down and bring your body back to the center and feel the effects of this pose in your body. And then we're going to do the same thing on the other side. You're going to take your feet over to the right side of your mat. Inhale, take your arms overhead. And exhale and side bend over to the right side. And we'll stay here for two minutes, breathing and softening, being still. Okay, so we're going to slowly release this pose from our bodies and come back to the center. And just feel the effects of the pose in our bodies. Okay, from here we're going to come into a reclined twist. You're going to take your arms out to the side, bend your knees, Place your feet flat on the floor, press into your feet, lift your hips, take them over to the left side of your mat, and then you're going to lower your knees over to the right side of your 
mat. If when you do that, your left shoulder lifts way off the ground, you can take a folded blanket or those cushions again from your couch and you just stick it underneath your knees and your shoulders should come back down onto the ground. So the third principle of yin yoga is that we stay for a while and we do this to access the deeper connective tissues of our body. In a regular yin yoga class, we can stay for five minutes, anywhere up to 20 minutes in a pose. But in a beginner yin yoga class, we stay anywhere from one to three minutes in a yoga pose. Okay, so you're going to bring your legs back to the center, press into your feet, untuck your hips, and if that cushion was helpful for your tight shoulders, then just put the cushion over to the other side, because you can use it on the other side as well. And then you're going to press into your feet again, lift your hips, take them over to the right side of your mat, and then lower your knees over to the left side of your mat. And we will stay on this side for a couple of minutes. Okay, and then we're going to come back center, press into your feet, 
and we're going to take the final resting position. And this can be with your knees bent and your feet flat on the floor or your legs out long. And this is a very important yoga pose to receive your practice, to allow you to integrate your practice. You can either have your hands on your belly or your palms turned up beside you. Okay, so you continue to rest back and receive your practice here. I like to finish my classes while people are resting in this final resting position by reading them a poem. So I'm going to sit up and read you a poem. This is one of my favorite poems by Mary Oliver. I like when I'm a guest on other people's channel because I get to read my favorite poems again. <laughs> this is called Today by Mary Oliver. Today I'm flying low and I'm not saying a word. I'm letting all the voodoos of ambition sleep. The world goes by as it must. The bees in the garden rumbling a little the fish leaping, the gnats getting eaten, and so forth. But I'm taking the day off, quiet as a feather. I hardly move, though I'm really traveling a terrific distance. Stillness, one of the doors into the temple. So gradually allow your breath to deepen, wiggle your fingers and toes. And if your knees aren't bent already, bend your knees, roll to your right side, pause there for a moment, and then slowly make your way up to seated. Thank you so much for joining me for this beginner yin yoga class. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you made it all the way to the end, I always love my yogis who make it all the way to the end of the class. And I like to know who they are. So let me know that you practice and that you made it all the way to the end by putting, I took time for stillness today in the comments, then I'll know. And thanks so much to Michelle from Heart Alchemy Yoga for having me as a guest on your channel today. I really appreciate that. And be sure to come over to my channel to check out Michelle's Power Yoga class on my channel. And also, if you enjoyed this class, then there are tons of other beginner yin yoga classes and intermediate yin yoga classes. I also teach restorative and hatha yoga, so you can 
come over there for 400 more plus uh, classes on my channel. We've been, I think Michelle and I have had a channel going for about the same amount of time. We've been at this for almost nine years now. So lots to, for you over there. We'd love to have you as a subscriber there as well. Again, thanks so much, Michelle, for having me. I'm sitting, we're both on the West Coast. Michelle's down in California. I'm up here in on Vancouver Island on Victoria, BC. So I'm sending you much love from beautiful British Columbia. May your joy be as deep as our Pacific Ocean. May you be as grounded as the old growth trees in our forest. And may you be as strong as our mountains. Om Shanti. Namaste.